Chapter 8 Grinning Slim I opened my eyes. I saw glinting stars of dust whirling like a golden hurricane through a bright shaft of noon sun. I looked through the open bedroom door. I saw the runt sitting at the living room window. She was doing her nails. She lifted her eyes from her nails. She looked into the bedroom. I said, Good morning, little freak puppy. I'm going to call Silas to run across the street for ham and eggs. Are you hungry? She said, Yeah, I'm hungry, but the way he moves around, it would take him a week to cop. I'll slip on something and go myself. She went to the closet and slipped on her blue poplin rain or shine coat. She took a fan off the dresser and held it up for my consent. I nodded my head. I heard the door shut when she went out. I lit a cigarette. I thought, I wonder if Melody has the heat looking for me. I've only got a day or so left before Glass Top takes me to Sweet Jones. I'm going to cool it. I won't go out at all. I'll stay right here in the hotel until Top calls me. The phone rang just as the runt came through the bedroom door. She put the plates wrapped in wax paper on the dresser. She picked up the receiver. I got up, took my plate, and started to eat with a plastic fork. She said, Hello. Oh, Chuck, how are you, sweetie? I was just thinking about you, lover. No, I can't. I wish I could come out for a few drinks. My brother won't be home from work until six. Mama's not well at all. I have to stay here during the day to take care of her. I could slip out around seven. Yeah, I can do that until eight for 20. Bye-bye, sugar blue eyes. She hung up the phone in her coat. She sat naked on the side of the bed, eating. I said, Bitch, I got an idea for that cat of yours. You gotta take a stiff brush and brush the hair straight down every time you think about it. Put some hair grower on it until maybe it's a four-inch comb. Your tricks will pant to bury their beaks in it. It will make your cat unique with that extra dimension. She mumbled, Where on earth did you get a jazzy idea like that? I said, bitch, ain't you hip yet? I'm a pimp with a great imagination, that's all. She finished her flapjacks. She got up and gathered an armful of our soiled clothing. She went into the bathroom. I heard the water sloshing in the bowl. She was doing our laundry. I turned my back to the sunlight. I felt old Morpheus slugging his velvet hammer against my eyelid. I woke up in darkness. I looked at the front room window. The streetlights were on. I turned the nightstand lamp on. Mickey said 710. The runt was gone. She was breaking her luck with Chuck. I thought, Jesus, I sure needed rest all right. That fast track I've been blundering on sure took the juice out of me. I got up and went into the bathroom to brush my teeth. I had made several brush strokes when the phone rang. I picked it up. He rapped before I could even open my mouth. He said, Kid, this is glass top. The plans have changed. I'm in a hurry. Be outside your joint in 15 minutes. You got that? I said, Yeah, but... He had hung up. I dressed even faster than I had at the sissy's pad. I rushed down the hall. I stopped at the broom closet stash. I hurled the sizzle into the corner on the shelf. I took the stairs three at a time to the lobby. I sailed the key to the desktop. I bolted out the door. Top was parked in front of the joint in the red hog. He had his hand over the horn when he saw me. I got in. The hog squealed from the curb. Top was sure in a hurry. I could hear the harsh whisper of the hog's tires against the pavement. We passed that neon bouquet. I looked back and saw the funhouse sign flashing. I wondered if Melody was out here somewhere booby-trapping with his intercess. I said, Jack, I didn't expect your call for a couple of days. What happened? He said, There's a big boxing match tonight. All the biggest pimps and whores in the country are going to be at Sweets after the fight. Kind of like a party. All of them use stuff. Even with Sweet as the middleman, I should still take off a couple of grand for my end. Sweet never goes to fights. 
He can't stand big crowds, and besides, they won't let Miss Peaches into fights. Sweet's gnawing his nails waiting for his stuff. He ain't got none for himself, and he's anxious to cop some stuff for those birds coming from the fight. I said, Have you cracked anything about me to him? He said, Kid, you ain't hip, I'm a genius. He called and I rapped to him this morning. I played you off as my punk nephew from Kansas City. You got wild ideas you want to be a pimp. I tried to chill you back to KC to maybe hustle pool or even be a broom mechanic. You're a stupid, stubborn punk. I've told you a thousand times you ain't got it to pimp. You got a pimp. You would eat ten yards of sweets as crap. You think he's God. You wouldn't believe your uncle is tight with God. I'm glass top. I got a saved face even for a snot-nosed punk. Maybe if you hang around the inside fast track for a hot minute, you'll get scared. You'll wise up. Get out of my ass and run your ass back to KC. Now, kid, don't shoot your jib off at his pad. If he don't remember you from the roost, don't wake him up. I said, don't worry, Top. I won't rank us. I'll never forget you, pal, for the cut in. That was sure some beautiful stuff you played for Sweet. He caressed his patent leather hair. He erected his wide shoulders inside his blue mohair jacket. His pretty bitch face wore that terrible conceit and awful pride, maybe of a cute mass murderer who never gets her victim's blood on her. The full moon through the window shield shone flush on his face. He said, Kid, you ain't heard nothing yet. Shit, I done drove three whores screaming crazy with this brain. They in the boo box upstate right now babbling about pretty glass top. Even Sweet ain't shipped up but two there. He's been pimping almost twice as long as me. I said, Christ, Top, I don't get it. Why drive a whore nuts if she's still humping out the scratch? A stud would have to be slick as grease to plant bats in the skull of a bitch that was sane. I can't dig how a stud could do it. I ain't hip to it. He said, Sucker, what you don't dig and ain't hip to would make a book bigger than this hog. Now you take sweet. The two he crossed were young white broads with small mileage. He's sick in the head. He's got an insane hate for the whole white race. He was a crumb crusher of seven down in Georgia when the white folks first poisoned his skull. His mammy was jet black and beautiful. The peck of woods for miles around were aching to lay her. The son of the wealthy plantation owner that Sweets' old man sharecropped for waylaid her on the way to a spring. He punched her out, tore her clothes off, and socked it to her. She was naked and crying when she got back to her shack. The peck of wood pig hid out in the woods. Sweets' old man came in from the fields and found his wife clawed and bawling. He was close to seven feet and weighed 300. Sweet still remembers how his old man hollered and butted his head against the door of the shack. The hinges ripped loose. He knew the woods like a fox. He found the white boy. He left him for dead. He covered him with brush. He slipped back to his shack. Sweet remembers the white boy's blood on his old man, even on his old man's bare feet. He had stomped the white boy to a red pulp out there in the lonely woods. The old man figured he was safe. The white folks would never find the corpse in those thick woods. He cleaned himself, repaired the shack door, and waited. He hadn't croaked the white boy. He had only maimed and paralyzed him. That night, a white man out possum hunting with his dogs heard the kid bleating under the brush. He was out of his skull. It was midnight before the kid's ravings made sense to the white folks. Sweet heard the mob's horses galloping toward the shack. He hid in the loft just as the crazy gang came through the shack slammer. Sweet peeped through a crack and watched them beat his old man's head bloody. They dragged him outside. Sweet saw the whole mob rape his mother. Finally, all was quiet except for his mother whimpering on the bed. He sneaked out of the loft. Through the open door, he saw his old man swinging in the moonlight from a peach tree in front of the shack. His mammy went to the funny farm. 
Sweet was taken in by a sharecropper on the same plantation. He worked the fields until he got 17. He ran away and caught a freight train north. He was 18 when he got his first haul. She was a white girl. He drove her to suicide before he got 19. Sweet's got to be 60 now. He paused. He steered the hog with one hand. He took a cigarette from his jacket pocket. He punched in the dashboard lighter. I thought, no wonder Sweet's is off his rocker. I wonder why Top really gave me that tight rundown on Sweet. The lighter popped. Top lit his cigarette. He sucked hard. He blew out a white cloud against the windshield that for an instant blotted out the moon. He said, I ain't insane like Sweet. My skull is clear and cool. I ain't no mixed up southern nigga. I was born in the north. I grew up with white kids. I don't hate white people or any other people. I ain't no black brute. I'm a pretty brown skinned lover. I love people. When I was a square, I was even engaged to marry a white girl. Her parents and friends put pressure on her and she chickened out. I guess I loved her. Right after we quit, I went to the hospital for my nerves. I ain't had nothing but whores since. It's like I told you when I met you. Sweet's a Ford, and I'm a Dusenberg. He's just an ugly, lucky nut. I said, But Top, you cracked your booby box score was higher than Sweet's. Those three gibbering bitches upstate sure don't show no love for whore people. He said, Here you go, fool. A young chump is just like a dumb bitch. He can't figure nothing out for himself. He's got to have a rundown on everything. Of course I drove those whores crazy, but for a sane reason, sucker. A pimp cops a whore. He cons her. Maybe if she stays in his corner humping his pockets fat, at the end of the rainbow, she's got a husband and a soft easy chair. To hold her beak to the grindstone, he pumps air castles into her skull. She takes all the stable grief. She humps her ass into a cramp to outshine the other whores in the family. At first, it's easy for the bitch to star. As she gets older and uglier, her competition gets younger and prettier. She don't have to be no brain to wake up. There's no easy chair at the end. She gets hip. There ain't never been a rainbow. She gets larceny in her heart. She bullshits herself that if she can drive all those young pretty whores away from the pimp, that rainbow might come true after all. If it don't, she'll get her revenge anyway. It's a violation of the pimp book to quit a whore. A bitch like that is a ticking time bomb. Every day, her value to the pimp drops to the zero line. She's old, tired, and dangerous. She can rattle a pimp into goofing his whole game. If the pimp is a sucker, he'll try to drive her away with his foot in her ass. She's almost a cinch to croak him across him into the joint. I'm a genius. I'm hip that after a bitch has had maybe 10,000 tricks driller, she ain't too steady skull-wise. I don't tip her I'm salty and disgusted. I talk like a sweet head shrinker to her. Indeed, of air castles, I pump her full of H. Her skull starts to jelly. I'll be worried as hell about her. I'll start sneaking slugs of morphine or chloral hydrate into her shots. While she's out, I'll maybe douse her chicken with blood. She comes to, I'll tell her I brought her in from the street. I'll tell her, I hope you didn't croak anybody while you were sleepwalking. I got a thousand ways to drive him goofy. That last broad I flipped, I hung her out a fifth floor window. I had given her a jolt of pure cocaine so she'd wake up outside that window. I was holding her by both wrists. Her feet were dangling in the air. She opened her eyes. When she looked down, she screamed like a scared baby. She was screaming when they came to get her. You see, kid? I'm all business. I ain't got an ounce of hating me. He had been driving for at least an hour. I had lost track of time and space. 
I saw no black faces in the streets around us. I saw tall, gleaming apartment houses. Some so tall, they seemed welded to the night sky. I said, yeah, Top, you're a cold, clever stud, all right. I'm sure glad you're yanking my coat. Jesus, Sweet must live in a white neighborhood. He said, yeah, kid. He lives just around that next corner in the penthouse. Like I told you, he's lucky as a shithouse rat. It's a million-dollar building. The old white broad that owns it is Sweet's freak white dog. I said, but don't the white tenants blow the roof because Sweet lives there? He said, Sweet's old white broad owns the building, but Sweet runs it. At least he runs it through an old ex-pimp pal. Sweet stuck him into a pad on the ground floor. Patch Eye, the old stud, collects the rents and keeps the porters and other flunkies on their toes. All the tenants are white gamblers and hustlers. Sweet has got the old ex-pimp running the book wide open. The action a day just from the tenants runs two or three grand. I'll say it a thousand times. Sweet is a lucky old stud. He turned the corner. He eased the hog into the curb in front of a snow-white apartment building. A moss-green canvas canopy ran from the edge of the curb 25 yards to the Klieg-lighted fancy front of the building. A gaunt white stud in a green monkey suit was standing in stooped attention at the curb. We got out. Top walked around the hog to the doorman. The doorman said, Good evening, gentlemen. Top said, Hello, Jack. Do me a favor. When you take my wheels to the back, see that it's parked close to an exit. When I come out, I don't want to hassle out of there. Here's a fin, Buster. The doorman said, Thank you, sir. I'll relay your wish to Smitty. We walked into the green-painted black marbled foyer. I was trembling like maybe a hick virgin on a casting couch. We walked up the half dozen marble steps to an almost invisible glass door. A Boston coffee colored broad slid it open. We stepped into the green and pearl lobby. A tan broad, as flashy as a cotton club pony, sat behind a blonde desk. We walked across the quicksand pearled carpet to the front of it. She flashed two perfect dozens of the 32. Her voice was Contralto Silk. She said, Good evening. May I help you? Top said, Stewart and Lancaster to see Mr. Jones. She turned to an elderly black broad sitting before a switchboard beside her. She told her, Penthouse, Mr. Stewart and Lancaster. The old broad shifted her earphones from round her wrinkled neck to her horns. She plugged in and started batting her chops together. After a moment, she nodded to the pony. We got the ivory flash again. The pony said, Thank you so much for waiting. Mr. Jones is at home, and we'll see you. I followed Top to the elevators. A pretty brown skin broad and a tight green uniform zipped us up to the 15th floor. The brass door opened. We stepped out onto a gold-carpeted entrance hall. It was larger than Top's living room. A skinny Filipino in a gold lame outfit came toward us. He was grinning and bowing his head. His lank hair flopped across the skull like the wings of a wooden raven. The crystal chandelier overhead glittered his gold suit. He took my lid. He put it on the limb of a mock mother of pearl tree. He said, Good evening. Follow, please. We followed him to the brink of a sunken living room. It was like a Pasha's passion pit. A green light inside the gurgling bowl of a huge fountain beamed on the vulgar face of a stone woman squatting over it. She was nude and big as a baby elephant. The red light inside her skull blazed. Her eyes stared straight ahead. Her giant hands pressed the tips of her long breasts into each corner of her wide-open mouth. 
She was peeing serenely and endlessly into the fountain bowl. We stepped down to the champagne oriental carpet. Sweet was sitting across the dim room on a white velour couch. He was wearing a white satin smoking jacket. He looked like a huge black fly in a bucket of milk. Miss Peaches was curled at his side. She was resting her black spotted head on a silk turquoise pillow. Sweet was stroking her back. She purred and locked her yellow eyes on us. I got a whiff of her raw animal odor. Sweet said, Sit your black asses down. Sweetheart, you've been dangling me. What happened? Did that raggedy nickel hog break down? So, this is your square country nephew? Top sat on the couch beside Miss Peaches. I sat in a blue velour chair, several yards to the side of Top. Sweet's gray eyes were flickering up and down me. I was nervous. I grinned at him. I jerked my eyes away to a large picture on the wall over the couch. A naked white broad was on her hands and knees. A great Dane with his red tongue lolling out was astraddle her back. He had his paws hooked under her breasts. Her blonde head was turned, looking back at him. Her blue eyes were popped wide open. Top said, Man, that hog ain't no plane. I got here quick as I could. You know I don't play no games on you, honey. I said, Thank you, Mr. Jones, for letting me come up with Unc. My voice triggered the roost memory. He stiffened and glared at me. He smashed his hooks together. It sounded like pistol shots. Peaches growled and sneered. He said, Ain't you the little shitball I chased out of the roost? I said, Yeah, I'm one and the same. I want to beg your pardon for making you salty that night. Maybe I could have gotten a pass if I had told you I'm your pal's nephew. I ain't got no sense, Mr. Jones. I took after my idiot father. Sweet said, Top, this punk ain't hopeless. He's silly as a bitch grinning all the time. But dig how he butters out the con to keep his balls out of the fire. You sure ain't got no tender dick to turn down my pretty big-ass Mimi. Kid, I love black boys with the urge to pimp. Ain't no sure way to amount to something. Your uncle ain't but a good pimp. I'm the greatest pimp in the world. He wired me he's hoping you'll fold on this track and split back to the sticks. You got one hole, he tells me. You could have the makings. This joint is going to be crawling with fast whores in a couple of hours. I'm going to be pinning you. I'm going to watch how you handle yourself. Maybe I'm going to make you my protege. You got to be icy. Understand, kid? Icy? Icy? You got to stop that grinning. Freeze your map and keep it that way. Maybe I'm going to prove to your half-ass pimp uncle that I can train even a mule to win the Kentucky Derby. Top said, Shit, honey. You don't have to tip him. I'm pulling for his split. I love the kid. I just don't think he can cut the pimp game. The kid raps good. I ain't denying it. He should maybe be a Murphy player or even a mitt man. His tick ain't icy enough to pimp on this track. I thought... Top's pad is a pigsty compared to this layout. It looks like I'm in. Sweet said, Sweetheart, let's go in the bedroom and cap up and bag that stuff for those jokers. I'm gonna have old Patch Eye come up here and deal it off. I ain't no dope peddler. I'm a pimp. Kid, you can cool it. Have the Filipino bring you a taste. If you want, get it yourself from the bar over there. They went around a hand-painted gold silk screen through a doorway. Peaches padded behind them. I saw a bronze bell on the table beside the couch. I decided to get my own taste. I walked across the room to a turquoise bar. I went behind it. I took a tall crystal glass off the mirrored shelf on the wall. I mixed creme de menthe and bubbly water. I took my green cool drink 
and walked toward the floor-to-ceiling glass door. I slid it open and stepped up into the patio. I looked up. The April Zephyrs were balleting the burnt orange and pale green Japanese lanterns. They danced on glowing jade cords strung high above the lime floor. The ice cream yellow moon seemed close enough to lick. I walked to the pearl parapet. I looked out at a brilliant sea of emerald and ruby neon bursting pastel skyrockets toward the cobalt blue sky, bejeweled with sapphire stars. I thought, Sweet sure has caught lightning in the thimble. He came out of the white man's cotton fields. He's pimped himself up to this. He's living high in the sky like a black god in heaven with the white people. He ain't no nigga doctor. He ain't no hot sheet nigga preacher. But he's here. He pimped up his scratch passport. That barbed wire stockade is a million miles away. I got more education. I'm better looking and younger than he is. I know I can do it too. I remembered Henry and how religious he was. Look what happened to him. I remember how I used to kneel every night by the side of the bed to pray. I really believed in God then. I knew he existed. Now, I wasn't so sure. I guess the first prison rap started to hack away at my belief in him. I often wondered in the cell how, if he existed, he can let the dummy destroy Oscar, who loved him. I told myself at the time, maybe he's got complicated long-range plans. Maybe he's even got divine reasons for letting the white folks butcher black people down south. Maybe some morning about dawn, all the black folks will sing hallelujah. God's white board of directors will untie the red tape. God will roll up his sleeves. He'll smash down the invisible stockades. He'll kill all the rats in the black ghettos. Fill all the black bellies and con all the white folks that niggas are his children too. Now I couldn't wait. If he were up there or not, I had to go with the odds. I started into the sky. It was the first time I prayed since Steve, the tramp. I know now... It was more fearful alibi than anything else. I said, Lord, if you're up there, you know I'm black and you know my thoughts. Lord, if the Bible is really your divine book, then I know it's a sin to pimp. If you're up there and listening, you know I'm not trying to con you. Lord, I'm not asking you to bless my pimping. I ain't that stupid. Lord, I know you ain't black. Surely you know, if you're up there, what it's like to be black down here. These white folks are doing all the fine living and sucking up all the gravy. I gotta have some of that living and some of that gravy. I don't want to be a stick-up man or a dope peddler. I sure as hell don't want to be a porter or a dishwasher. I just want to pimp, that's all. It's not too bad, because whores are rotten. Besides... I ain't going to croak them or drive them crazy. I'm just going to pimp some real white type living out of them. So, Lord, if you're up there listening, do one thing for me. Please don't let me croak before I live some and get to be somebody down here in the white man's world. I don't care what happens after that. I look down over the parapet. I wondered if the undertaker had been born yet, who was slick enough to paste a sucker's ass together after a Brody 15 stories down. I heard Tuxedo Junction pulsing behind me. I had pitched my pipes dry. I upended my drink. I turned and walked toward the glass door. I saw the Japanese lantern splashing color on the polished alabaster topped tables. The Filipino had sure been busy flopping his mop. I slid the door open to a chorus of profanity. The horse scent flared my nostrils. There must have been 30 yapping pimps and whores lounging around the spacious pit. I stepped down and slid the door shut. An ebony satin-skinned pimp was sprawled in the blue velour chair. 
A tawny, tan tigress was kneeling before him between his legs. She had her chin rammed into his crotch. She clutched him around the waist, like a humping two-dollar trick in an alley. Her dreamy maroon eyes rode toward the top of her long skull. She was staring at his fat blue lips. It was maybe she expected him to whistle the lost chord. The rock on his finger exploded blue-white frozen waterworks. He raised his glass to curse all square bitches. He was con toasting all whores. The room got silent. Somebody had strangled the gold phonograph in the corner. He toasted. Before I touch a square bitch's slit, I'd suck a thousand clappy pricks and swim through liquid shit. They got green puke between their rotten toes and snot runs from their funky noses. I hope all square bitches become syphilitic wrecks. I hope they all fall through their own assholes and break their motherfucking necks. It was the first time I'd heard it. It was the first time for the crowd, too. They roared and begged him to do it again. He looked toward the hand-painted Chinese screen. All eyes turned to Top and Sweet coming into the room. An old black stud wearing a white silk patch over his right eye trailed behind them. Peaches followed him. He looked like a vulture decked out in a gray mohair vine. Peaches stood before the white velour couch and bared her fangs. The three pimps sitting on it scattered off it, like quail under a double-barreled shotgun. They thumped their rear ends to the carpet. Sweet, Top, and Peaches sat on the couch. I sat on a satin pillow in the corner near the glass door. I watched the show. I saw Patch Eye go and sit behind the bar. Everybody was in a big half circle around the couch. It was like the couch was a stage and Sweet was the star. Sweet said, Well, how did you silly bastards like to fight? Did the nigga murder that peck of wood or did his black ass turn shit yellow? A southern white whore with a wide face and a sultry voice like bank heads drawled, Mr. Jones, I'm happy to report that the nigga run the white stud back into his mammy's ass in the first round. Everybody laughed except Sweet. He was crashing together his mitts. I wonder what madness bubbled in his skull as he stared at her. A high-ass yellow broad flicked life back into the phonograph. Gloomy Sunday, the suicide's favorite dirged through the room she stared at me as she came away sweet said all right you freakish pigs patch eyes got outfits and bags of poison you got the go sign to croak yourselves they started rising from the satin pillows and velour ottomans they clustered around patch eye at the bar the high ass yellow broad came to me she stooped in front of me I saw black tracks on her inner thighs. The inside of her gaping cat was beefsteak red. She had a shiv slash on the right side of her face. It was a livid gully from her cheekbone to the corner of her twisted mouth. Small pock craters covered her face. I caught the glint of a pearl-handled switchblade in her bosom. Her gray eyes were whirling in her skull. She was high. I was careful. I grinned. Sweet was digging us. He was shaking his head in disgust. I wondered if he thought I ought to slug her in the jib and maybe take that shiv in the gut. She said, Let me see that pretty prick, handsome. I said, I don't show my swipe to strange bitches. I got a whore to pamper my swipe. She said, Nigga, you ain't heard of me. I'm Red Cora from Detroit. That red is for blood. You ain't hip, I'm a thieving bitch that croaked two studs. Now I said show that dick. Call me Cora. 
little bullshit nigga. Ain't you a bitch with one whore? You gonna starve to death, nigga. If she's a chump flatbacker, nigga, you better get hip and cop a thief. A big husky broad with a spike in one hand and a pack of stuff in the other took me off the hook. She need Cora's spine. She said, Bitch, I'm gonna shoot this dope. You want some? You could Georgia this skinny nigga later. I watched Cora's rear end twist away from me. She and the husky broad went to the bar and got a spoon and a glass of water. I looked at Sweet. He was giving me a cold stare. I thought, This track is too fast. I can't protect myself. With young soft bitches like the runt, I'm a champ. These old hard bitches, I gotta solve. I gotta be careful and not blow sweet. If I suck out anymore tonight, he'll freeze and boot me. I sat in the corner bug-eyed for two hours. My ears flapped to the super slick dialogue. I was excited by the fast-paced, smooth byplay between these wizards of pimpdom. Red Cora kept me edgy. She went to the patio several times. She was head out of her skull. Each time she passed, she cracked on me. She was sure panting to view my swipe. Several of Sweet's whores came in. None of them had been at the roost with him the first time I saw him. All of them were fine with low mileage. One of them was yellow and beautiful. She couldn't have been more than 17. There was a giant black pimp from the apple. He had three of his whores with him. He had been boasting about how he had his swipe trained. He was one of the three at the party that didn't bang stuff. I watched him snort girl and down a few mixed drinks. He had a glass in his hand standing over Sweet and Top on the couch. He said, Sweet, ain't a bitch living can pop me off unless I want her to. I don't care if she got velvet suction cups in her cap. Her jib can have a college degree. She ain't gonna make me pop against my will. I got the toughest swipe in the world. I got a C note to back my crack. Sweet said, Sucker, I got a young bitch I turned out six months ago that can blow that tender sucker swipe of yours in five minutes. I ain't going to teach you no lesson for a measly C-note. If that C-note ain't all you got, put five bills in Top's mitt, and you got a bet. The big joker snatched a roll from his side pocket. He plunked five C-notes into Top's palm. Sweet eased a bale of C-notes from the pocket of his smoking jacket. He covered the bet in Top's hand. Sweet snapped his fingers. The beautiful yellow broad kneeled before the standing giant. She started to perform before the cheering audience. Within less than three minutes, she had won the bet for Sweet. The big joker stood there for a long moment with his eyes closed. He had a goofy grin on his face. One of his whores snickered. He slapped her hard against the jaw. He went to the bar. I thought, she sure had a head for business. Pepper was great, but she couldn't hold this broad's douchebag. I got up and went behind the Chinese screen through the door. I went down the long hall. I passed three way out bedrooms. I went into a mirror john. It was as big as a bedroom. I pushed the door shut. I should have locked it. I walked to the stool. I raised the lid. That tough bitch, Red Cora, darted in. She was licking out her red tongue. Her gray eyes were voodooing in her skull. She was hot as hell for my relative innocence and youth. She was a double murderess with a skull load of H and a hot jib. I stood there before the deadly bitch. I searched the thin catalog in my skull. I didn't know the right crack for a situation like this. I mumbled a plaintive pitch. I said, Now listen, girl, you haven't given me a nickel. I'm not your man. It was like trying to stand off a starving leopard with a broom straw. 
She snaked that shiv out of her bosom and popped the gleaming blade open. She clawed my fly open with the other hand. I heard buttons bounce on the tile floor. My ticker was doing a foxtrot. She said, You jabbing pretty son of a bitch. You ain't no pimp. I'm gonna eat your sweet ass up or chop off your dick. I backed up to the wall beside the stool. I could feel the wet throbbing tips of my fingers against the cool tile. She was grabbing inside when Sweet pulled in. He seized a fistful of her long hair. She squealed in pain. He jerked her away from me toward the door. He cussed her as he drove his needle-toed shoe into her wide caboose several times. He said, Bullshit, bitch. This chump is in my school. I ain't gonna let you Georgia him. Now nix, bitch, nix. I heard her high heel staccato against the tile as she fled. He turned toward me. His black face was gray with fury. Maybe Sweet would forget I wasn't yellow. I remembered what Top had told me about those four murders. He thrust his flat black nose against mine. I could feel a spray of spit strike my lips as he cursed me. He twisted the collar of my vine like a garrot around my throat. He had snatched me six feet from the wall. He shouted, Listen, you stupid little motherfucker. You know why that bitch screwed you around? You always grinning like a Cheshire cat. What's funny? Can I get the sucker out of you? I can't make a pimp out of pussy like you. I told you once. Do I have to tell you a thousand times? Green ass nigga. To be a good pimp, you gotta be icy cold like the inside of a dead horse pussy. Now if you a bitch, a sissy or something, let me know. I'll put you in drag and you can hold for me. Stay out of my face, nigga, until you freeze up and stop that sucker grinning. I heard his ground grippers skid against the floor as he hurled me against the wall. The back of my skull torpedoed into it. Through a drowsy fog of pain, I saw him float away. My back snailed down the wall. I laughed at the funny way the shoe tips turned in as the long legs glided across the tile. I sat there on the cool floor, gazing at the weird, comical legs stretched out before me. I saw a pair of blue mohair legs right angle the flat ones. I looked up. It was Top. He bent over to help me up. He said, Kid, now you believe the ugly bastard is insane? Take this key to my hog. Get it out of the lot and back. Park in the block and cool it. I'm getting out of here myself as soon as I cop my end of the smack scratch. I riveted my eyes to the champagne carpet. I zigzagged through the snickering whores and pimps. I made it across the pit to the elevator. The Filipino was standing beside it. He was pressing the down button. He looked like a friendly brown snake sausage and gold foil. He reached up and stroked my jacket collar down, flat, from around my ears he took my lid off the pearl tree he stuck it on my skull and snapped the brim I felt the sweat band needle the aching boil I adjusted my lid he said good night sir Sammy hopes you had fine time I said Sammy pile it's been a wild night I'll never forget it I got a whiff of crotch as the elevator plunged to the lobby. I wondered if the pretty brown-skinned jockey hoard a little bit as a sideline. I stepped out of the gilded cage into the lobby. I saw a winking red arrowed sign in the rear. I walked to the glass door below it. I went down the white stone steps to the parking lot. I spotted Top's red hog in the ocean of cars. I went to it, unlocked it, and got in. A big white Buick was parked in front of it. A grinning brown-skinned joker in white overalls came toward the Buick. I saw Smitty, blue-stitched across his breast pocket. He pulled the Buick out. I keyed the hog and scooted it out of the lot. I whipped around the corner and coasted to the curb 50 feet from the entrance of Sweet's apartment building. I shut the motor off. 
I lowered the driver's side window. I put my lid on the seat. I threw back my head on the top of the seat. I closed my eyes. I dozed. Something was crushing my jaw. A blinding spotlight burned into my eyeballs. I heard the foghorn voice. It blasted. Police officers! Nigger, what the hell you doing? What's your name? Show us your identification. I couldn't answer with my jaw crushed in a vice. I was dazed. I lowered my eyes below the inferno of light. I saw a white, brutish wrist. Thick black hair bristled on it. I saw muscles cord and ripple across it as the vice tightened around my jawbone. I wondered if the copper was Satan and I had croaked in the hog and was being checked into hell. Hell or not, Satan wanted identification. I remembered the fox and the horse. I didn't even have a hide. Satan swung the hog door open. The door frame blackjacked the top of my skull as Satan yanked me from the hog. He released my jaw and slammed me across the hood of the hog, my wet palms skidding on top of it. Satan's fellow demon was punch frisking me from breast to shoe soles. He poked an index finger inside my shoe. I felt a tickle in the arch of my instep. I said, My name is Albert Thomas. Hell, I wasn't doing anything, officers. I was just waiting for my uncle. I lost my wallet. I didn't finish. A galaxy of shooting stars orbited my skull. It was like a flame-hot poker was embedded in that sore bump at the back of my skull. I heard the tinkle of glass against the hood. I puked and nosedived to the hood. I felt the warm, stinking mess against my cheek as I lay across the hood, gasping. Glass splinters sparkled on the hood. Satan had slugged his flashlight against my skull. I saw the fellow demon's shadow bobbing inside the hog. He was frisking it, too. Satan said, Nigger, you got a sheet downtown? What do you do for a living? I whispered, I've never been in trouble. I'm an entertainer. I'm a dancer. He said, You black conning bastard. How in the fuck do you know what a sheet is? You been mugged, nigger? Stand up straight. I'm gonna take you downtown. You can jig a few steps on the show up stage. I struggled off the hood. I turned and faced him. I looked up into the red, puffy face. Top came around the back of the hog and stood between us. He said, What's the beef, officer? This is my nephew and my Cadillac. The kid was waiting for me. He's clean. We've been to a party at Sweets. You know who he is. We're personal friends of his, you dig? Satan's puffy face creased into a hyena grin. He rapped on the windshield. I saw the demon's starch white face peer over the rear seat. Satan waved him from the hall. He clambered out and stood beside Satan. Satan said, Looks like we made a slight mistake, Johnny. These gentlemen are pals of Mr. Jones. Mr. All your nephew had to do to beat the roust was mention a name. Christ, we have to do our job. There's a cat burglar operating in this district. The lieutenant is riding our asses to nab him. Sorry about the whole thing, gentlemen. The rollers walked across the street. They got into a black Chevrolet and gunned it away. I took a handkerchief from my back pocket. I wiped the bits of loose glass and most of the puke off the hood. I threw the rag in the gutter. I got in the hall. Top U-turn and headed back to Blacktown. I touched the bump on my skull. I felt the spot of sticky ooze. My skull had only a tiny split. I wiped my fingers on the end of my lapel pocket handkerchief. I thought, Yeah.
a week sweet lays on him. Every copper in the district from captain down freezes his mitts on that lard bucket and sweets his pot. Mary, mammy of Jesus, you stink. You must have shit your pants. You sure getting funky breaks, kid. Too bad you couldn't handle Red Cora. He's one of the fastest thieves in the country. I said, look, Top, if that crazy pock-faced bitch had a tunnel straight into Fort Knox, I wouldn't fart in her jib. I hate old hard leg holes. He said, that's a chump crack. After you get hip to the pimp game, you'll take scratch from a gold tooth, three-legged bulldog with two heads. Say, listen, kid, don't ever forget to keep that rundown on sweet under your lid. through the lobby. The indicator pointed out. The elevator was at the fourth floor. I took the stairs and picked up the sizzle from the broom closet. The runt let me in after the first knock. I walked by her to the bedroom and stuck the sizzle in a coat pocket in the closet. I started taking my stinking clothes off. She was standing in the doorway. I tossed them in a pile in the corner. She said, Daddy, when you passed me, you smelled like you'd been dunked in a garbage truck. What happened? I headed for the bathroom. I was standing over the stool. She followed me. She stood in the bathroom doorway. I looked over my shoulder at her. I said, Bitch, some white rollers busted me tonight. They got the why I'm in town to pimp. They took me down and beat the puke out of me. Baby, they wanted me to finger you. They wanted to know where you worked. Shit. I was too pure in heart to put a finger on you, baby. I'm not feeling worth a damn, so go on the dummy, okay? I flushed the toilet. I turned the shower on. I gave her a hard look and frowned. She turned and got into bed. I took Mickey off. It was 4 a.m. I showered and toweled off. I fell into bed without checking the scratch on the dresser.